Well, welcome back to Random American, and it's finally time to get the engine transmission transfer case out of this thing and start working on the wiring. So I'm going to get this thing started and maybe cleaned out enough that I can drive it 35 feet. And yeah, that's one step at a time. One step. <laughs> Eventually, that seat will be in there, but it's going to require some heavy modification. Oh God, that's coming off. Oh. Uh oh. Whatever. Put the whiskey on the floor. Whatever that is. <laughs> this carburetor's junk. It takes a while. And the choke doesn't work. I should go prime it, but I'm not going to. Okay, so I'm going to start off the basics. I'm just going to be uh, removing the battery, draining some fluids. Nothing too crazy. Always remove your negative first. Keeps it from arcing against the truck. Pro tip, if you guys are going to do this by yourself, uh, put your bolts back in anywhere you can. Doesn't matter where, what, how, or why. Put your bolts back. Well, after my camera falling eight feet and almost breaking. I don't know how it didn't. This thing's screwed. For now. We'll see if we can do something about that later. But for right now, ah, not important. Oh, there's a big part of my problem. That was completely split. Huh. Okay, now I'm going to work, I'm going to get the radiator out, and some of this stuff. Yeah. Battery tray is good for something. <laughs> uh, yes, you can go from a two inch hose down to a one and a half outlet. Don't let anybody lie to you chase your dreams, kids. Alright. Water pump off.
That's a five inch mass. Yeah. Okay, so this is obviously not a sponsorship, but these are ARP studs for my headers. They've been on for a while. Look at that. Just easy as pie. And then I can mostly just turn it by hand. I'll hit it with a little bit to give me a little bit of lubrication on these threads up here. But that impressed me. I thought that those were for sure not going to come off. So ARP, you did a good job on that one. All right, now that I have the headers off, I can go ahead and get those wires for my starter pretty easy. And I have to take that little thing right there to... It's a tank heater to heat up your coolant in the winter. I uh, used it eh, a little bit. It actually works really well. But I'll get the starter out of here. I'll get the tank heater out of here. And then we actually have to go under. I'll have to start taking drive shafts out. And this thing is almost ready to pull. Really not a whole lot to these things. So... Luckily, this is going to be a, a pretty quick pull today. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and get the drive shaft here disconnected. And I'm going to put a ratchet strap across. Learn that from Vice Grip Garage. I'm going to pull down this here cross member. Try not to die. And maybe... Well, yeah. Yeah, pull this cross member down. Try not to die. Pull the motor mount bolts out. Take the rear drive shaft off, and this thing is coming out. Very exciting stuff. Ah. Ah. Everything's got oil on it. Safety glasses says who? I'm insane. Wear your safety glasses, guys. That was kind of stupid. Tight. Tight. Oh, sweet Jesus. Why the hell did I do that? Oh, good God. There we go. Oh, my God. That is going to be tied up to the transmission whenever we just pull this out of here because that ain't coming out without an impact and I promise you I didn't put it in with an impact didn't have one <sighs> okay you guys are terrible friends you're not even telling me whenever I'm working harder than I need to So in case you were wondering, that is too much play. Way, way too much play. And even feels kinda hard. So there's something bad going on in there. Well, oh, look at that, not today. We have some rain that's about to set in. I was waiting on a buddy of mine to get here, but it's gonna get here way too soon. So I'm gonna real quickly, just see how this goes by myself.
Might not look like it. That took me 45 minutes. And yes, I understand that I could have done this without the transfer case and it had taken me like five, but whatever. So now the, the real work begins. I have to rip out all the electrical. I'm gonna go ahead and degrease and paint all the inside of this. And yeah, we'll just start getting ready for the LS. Alrighty, so I'm gonna get the wiring ripped out of this, like all this, my, oh, my tack, my gauge cluster, all this is coming out of here. All my fuse box stuff coming out of here because it is all getting rewired. I'll get the clutch out of here. I'm probably gonna use the other brake setup just because it's easier and I'll have a full width brake, you know. But got it all mouse suckered out with my little orange egg vacuum cleaner. So there's that. I'll keep you updated. Alrighty. Well, good news and bad news. Uh, bad news, maybe good news, depending on how you look at it. I'm going to end the episode here. Uh, further bad news is it's also good news, I guess, but I'm not going to be using the truck harness pretty much at all now. I don't have enough time. Uh, I'd like to get it done eventually, but... Uh, I found a much easier way to do it, and that includes buying just an $85 universal harness that should work fantastic. I talked to a guy that knows a lot more about this than I do, and it's stupid simple. I'll show you in the next one whenever we get to the rest of the wiring. I got that stuff coming in. Uh, also, in the bad news column for me, is I spent a whole bunch of time getting the rest of that harness out of that truck before I knew all of this. So here's a short clip of that, of me absolutely struggling. Why is it wet? <sighs> Just like that, a painless, easy wiring harness removal. But, good news. Uh, next time, maybe we're setting the engine in. Maybe we're going to actually make some progress. Maybe I'm going and getting that rear end that I need. Yeah, it's hard to tell. So stick around for that. I don't even know what's going to happen. So you're just as informed as I am. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate the hell out of your support. And I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.